Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 155. Correct. 155, presented by Parse Rum. Parse Rum, the rum for whiskey drinkers. If you like to have a little whiskey, neat on the rocks, whatever, try, try it with a little bit of rum. Try it with a little bit of Parse Rum. Go to Benny's. Go to your local shop and ask for Parse. I wouldn't say with. You said if you like whiskey on the rocks, try it with parsley rum. And I was like, well, I don't know if I well, combine whiskey and rum. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I would substitute. I'd make a substitution. Parsley rum, the official drink of Chicago Cub outfielder who signs an extension. He's there for a few more years. Look at that. Thank what you, friends. A day. Thank what you. a week. I got way too many tweets saying I couldn't make Yankees jokes anymore. Well, guess what? They're still coming. Can't wait for oh, yeah. you to trade hey, what at the is, deadline. What, what does that mean? You can't get traded if you sign an extension? Well, yeah. you have a full there's no trade. So Yeah, it's true. But Happer, how's it feel? Yeah, what do it's we got, nice. dude? It's nice. I mean, biggest part of it is that it's really cool to still be in, like, know that you're going to be in one place. And I think you played a year to year for so long, right? Like you play in your career and even if, like you kind of feel like you're going to be on the team. You're still, you're either playing for a raise or through arbitration, or you're playing to get to that spot in free agency. And so having that security for the first time, you know, you played six, seven years in the big leagues and then you finally get the security. It's a pretty cool feeling and really hard to like wrap your head around. It still doesn't feel, I guess it still doesn't feel real and like, Eventually it will. Eventually it'll just be normal, but like that doesn't really set in. I don't think it, it's so crazy. You know, three years ago, we've talked about it a bunch. You know, Dakota and I met you in Iowa. You know, like you were playing with us, and then now you were, happy. Funny, you were like, happy. You were happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's just wild. You know, you see, like, I, I don't want to say that I don't view you as like this, you know, crazy superstar but it's just it's crazy like a few years ago we were grinding in triple a together and then now something just flips and you sign a multi-year extension worth a lot of money and it's just crazy you know like you said it doesn't feel real because it happens so quickly like so quickly yeah and there's so i mean there's so many like parts of your career that lead to that moment you know and i think that's the interesting thing to look back on is like yeah i did like I was 1.19. I was grinding, like not not having success in AAA and like knocking the door down. I was grinding. You still you grinded until you, even when you were called up, you were still grinding, right? Like if I remember correctly. I mean, yeah, I had a good, I had a good 19. I finished really well. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking about. But that's what, yeah, like we're not trying to knock you, but like you didn't, like you said, you didn't set the world on fire in AAA. No, no, to start the year. No, I was grinding in AAA, and then. You know, figured some things out at the end of 19 in the big leagues. Um, yeah. And then had a really good 20. And then, you know, 21 had its own struggles. But then, you know, you find, you know, all you take all those experiences and put them together and find those things and then get an opportunity. Like, it's just you get an opportunity to play. And like, I'm pretty grateful for an opportunity to play at the second half of 21 and then to do it all last year because you feel like you can be that player but it's really hard to get the opportunity. You, know, you have to be in the right situation. And, you know, I was in the right situation second half of 21 when everybody got dealt. And like, once you get that right situation, you take advantage of it. Like it can really change things. So grateful for that, but really excited just to be in Chicago. Like, and it's, I think the, um, you know, it's, it's awesome to be with the organization. It's awesome to be like, have, have a chance to play with Nico for four more years and Dansby and tie on like, say uh like it's cool to have four more you know it's three more after this but it feels like four you know full years to play with those guys um that's really really cool and you get to feel that feeling of like building something because you know you're always you always are trying to win but you don't really feel like you don't know when you're not sure if you're going to be there like you're wanting to build something like the organization means so much to you but at the same time it's like i could be gone in a couple months the ability to feel like you're going to be there and like build something with that group is really a, a cool thing. And then like the personal stuff, like we had married in Chicago in the fall, like 
was having to go wedding plan in like another from another place or like having to having to be in the middle of free agency during the like wedding or honeymoon or something like I was completely and totally prepared to do that like had accepted it was cool with it um had gotten to a place mentally that I was very very okay with that but you know once you once you figure things out and then take a step back it's like it's nice that I'm not going to have to do that and that there's some like consistency to your life that you're familiar with for the first for the beginning of like the next chapter of your life that's from a real world human perspective outside of baseball that's a very nice thing I'll tell you what too that wedding better be stepped up a notch you got some extra funds now I I expect a castle um maybe I don't know someone so is there a lot of castles in Chicago I don't, I don't know, know. I, he can build one he's got that much money He's got $61 million and it's all, it all comes at once. It's not over the next three years. You got it That's all exactly in one right. paycheck. Yep. Yeah. As just soon as you sign it, account. they just throw it at you. Yeah. It's just a briefcase with $61 yeah. million. You're like, here you go. Good job. Ian, can I ask you the reception you got on Wednesday at the field? That's the- what I was going to say. Yeah. Did like, yeah, what was that like? Just kind yeah. of see, because obviously they yeah. announced it right before the game. So you kind of had the ability very kind of very pretty rare to have it like announced and 10 minutes later you see the fans at a game yeah that was cool and look we kind of worked we did i mean kudos to everybody because everybody did a really good job keeping it quiet um i got like one i got one text i got one text from someone the night prior that was like i'm hearing whispers it was Zach. Zach totally gave you up. Oh my God. Is it JP? <laughs> it was JP. And Zach told him it was not JP. I'm back. I did get a nice text from JP though, but the, uh, but everybody did a good job of keeping it quiet and having it not, it was like, I was pretty surprised it didn't leak. So we worked on it, you know, came to, came to an agreement, but then you have to go get physical. So like Wednesday morning, I had to go get physicals and MRIs and stuff like early, early in the morning. And then we were waiting for that all to come back. So like it was kind of like from the time I woke up to when we announced it, like noon, it was just like waiting to get everything back and everything finalized. Um, I didn't actually sign the paper until I was on the plane, but the uh, it was really it was really a special experience to have played so long in Chicago and like. Wrigley's always been really special to me. And I've always like felt this like really cool aura that it has or and the fans and the way that they've always, you know, react to the game. They're so smart, they're intelligent, they understand. And then like they've really supported me over the last couple of years, even going like even in twenty one as things were not great for me and for the team. And so to be able to have that moment where I ran out there um was really a cool thing with that on the video board above. And I think that I think when we go back home too, and, and kind of that first like Nike front, whatever it is, Friday day game or the first like big crowd, whenever the weather's nice, I think that'll be pretty cool too. When, so like the next day, since nobody really knew and the news came out, was everybody in the locker room? Like what the fuck? I mean, everybody in the locker room, like we kept it even, we didn't tell anybody. That's what I'm saying. So, like, when the news came out, was everybody looking at you like, "Sick, congrats!" But what? Couldn't share. Couldn't share. The kind news of. Point? Kind of. Yeah. I mean, everybody was super happy. Obviously, but I told Nico. That's what I was gonna ask. I was like, I, I'm guessing you told Nico. Yeah, I told Nico. Um, once we came to an agreement, which was right before the game on Tuesday. Oh, and you then, told him before us. Oh man. And then, and then everything kind of. I think Tucker maybe found it out real quick, but kept it pretty quiet. And then the next day, um, kind of once it got out there on social, everybody, everybody's doing their own thing though. I think that's the thing about baseball that is so funny. It's like when you're, when you're in it, like you think everybody's thinking about you, but everybody's really thinking about themselves because everybody's yeah. grinding throughout their day. So like, yeah, people are, people are all in their own skit and that's what makes, it makes the locker rooms very funny places. But yeah, we, it was, um, I finally signed the paperwork on the plane with Veej, which was great. How great was that walk back to your seat? Pretty nice. 
Yeah. I'm con- wait. So like your agent doesn't have to be there with you to sign them. Well, my agent was in town, so my agent flew in. Like when we started getting pretty close, my agent flew in, so he was there. And he, like during the game and before the game, like read the term sheet and you know approved everything. And the agent has to sign too, but he he like did everything and signed off on the term sheet Got before it. they gave it to me. Got it. Well, so, and I I don't understand why. Why why couldn't we break the news? Like I don't like with the deals. Good, like I'd that, love to know. You know, that's I'm I'm actually curious and like I'm not like joking aside. Like I actually like why does the team have to be the one to tell people? Like they didn't even, agreed they to didn't it, even like, break why? it. The team they didn't even didn't. break it. Well, like the beat reporter did, but I'm like, why does it have to be the team's reporters? Like, why couldn't we like from the compound account be like, we're hearing blah blah blah, Ian have three years, sixty one million? It's a good question. I'm not saying I'm not shows, saying shows, it shows where we stand. Well, like, no, I'm saying, no, I'm guessing it's the nervous. I, this is probably all players. It's probably like the nervousness of like, well, if it gets out there and like they don't like the way it got out there, maybe they'll be like, oh, like, forget that. No, but we won't do it. But after after he signed it or after they agreed to it. True, but it wasn't game. signed yet. And I get if I'm half, I'm like, it hey, wasn't signed. Just, That's the thing. Let's just get my name on the paper first. Let's get my name on the paper first. Think as the player, too, like you just don't want to do like you don't want to risk it you don't want to be the one that leaks it or like you don't want to you know what i mean like you don't want to be the one we could have said anonymous sources no i I don't know what you mean because if somebody approached me with that i would literally put it out there as soon as the word was spoken. let me say max tweeting i got 61 million reasons to be happy today if someone's on that's him let me say let me say this looking back now i wish we would have broken it that would have been awesome that's slob i'm off that Looking back now, I'm like, you know, this podcast I, I could probably have blown I, up. I probably I could have asked. I probably could have asked someone. Like, I probably could have said, like, "Hey, can, like, can we do an emergency episode where I announce it?" That's what we should have done. Oh, or just tweet from the account. Man. Hey, source confirms Ian Hap three for sixty one, and then everybody oh got our Twitter would have blown up oh. to see it. That was a missed opportunity. It was a missed opportunity. <laughs> But wouldn't you admit that at the time, like you said it to us, because I, I kept like joking with you trying to see if we could be the ones to break it. Like you don't want them to blow up the deal over something like that. No, And we also we weren't when I told you guys we were done and we had we had agreed on we had agreed on a lot of things. There was a couple final like structure points that we were still trying to figure out. So it didn't feel like as completely done. Yeah. As looking and, back down, it was it you, was done looking back down, but it didn't feel completely done. Well, if I'm you too, like you even said, like just l- let me sign it first. Like let me get my name on there before, so yeah. they can't take it away. Like it's done, it's signed. It's you have to. Yeah, pay. but it was <laughs> it was out at Wrigley before you signed it, right? Ian, can you walk us through like the last week of your life? What like when did it start to get serious? Because I know you said you kind of agreed to before Tuesday. Just take us through like the last week, if you can, of your life, because. Probably might be the most important week of your life, but le- up, certainly up there, right? Got to be like a top 10 week of your life. I mean, yeah, I would say in the top 10 for sure. Yeah. How exciting is this guy's life? 61 million <laughs> reasons isn't in his top 10. Well, it's, it's a top one, you know, is meeting his fiance. That's one up there. That's, you know, you got to you gotta look out yeah. for that kind of stuff. Getting engaged, number two. Yeah, that, that'd be number two. Every dinner, that we've had to get, every dinner that we've had together is like all the way, all three, four, five. To uh, look at that. Then, smart guy, smart man. That's an engagement. That's a smart but man. But she wouldn't even agree with you on that one. No, I don't know. She, <laughs> no. We had started, you know, we had we'd talked all spring and there had been back and forth all spring and, and numbers exchanged or whatever. And then, you know, in Cincy, we kind of started the process again. Which is interesting too. After you go through that whole thing, and then you start the process again, and it's kind of another like a fresh thing. But we, you know, we had a place to pick up at, and we went back and forth a few times. Um, and it felt like once we started talking again, it felt a lot more. There's a lot more optimism, I think, and we had momentum. And like part of, I think part of getting a deal done is like you have to have momentum, and both sides have to have momentum to get there. And it kind of felt like when we started again, we had that. And so 
you know, it all came together pretty quickly because it was like we came home and we had this home stand, which was kind of a natural like uh, time frame for us. So it was like, we're going to know pretty quick if we can meet in the middle here or get close to it. And then we had the home stand of like, all right, if we don't get it done by the end of this home stand, like we're going to have to move on and like everybody's going to have to have their you know have their season but then it felt like if we if we can get it done by the homestand we would have like an ability to announce it at Wrigley and that would be pretty cool so I think both sides you know that wasn't like explicitly said but both sides kind of felt that and we had this momentum towards the deal and so that's why things came together so quickly and the no trade part of it's really awesome and you know, some of the bonus structure is great. And, you know, the fa- it's like there's a lot of things in there that are pretty cool. And and it, when you want to be so, like, I really wanted to be there. And then you have to sacrifice on like, you know, it's not five years, it's not six years, it's not the last deal you're ever going to sign. It's not the, you know, it's not that, hey, I'm going to ride off into the sunset with this thing. But like it's security and it's also, you know, it's the place that I want to be and the organization that I want to be with. And so you, you know, you get a little bit higher AAV, but sacrifice on your ability to go get that five six year deal was there ever a like throughout the season did you ever have like a deadline in your head where you're like if i don't get an extension by this day then i'll just see what free agency holds in the off season no there there was never a day and i never i never felt like that there's definitely times where i didn't want to answer questions about it or like i didn't want it to be a constant topic for um like surrounding the team but the yeah. Which, you know, it was definitely was early in spring, but then after Nico signed his and then they're asking. And so like you don't want it to be this this thing. But um it just felt like it it kind of felt like if you didn't get it done then, then like when would you? And so mm-hmm. it would be like then you would always have your number and at some point your your number start has to start to go up, right? Or your demands have to start to go up. And if that doesn't match with the team, you know, then what's the next natural places the all-star game like that the the break like the all-star break like at that point your numbers probably don't line up and yeah so i don't know if there would have been another like spot or scenario to get it done but um i was never gonna just say like i'm out that's what i think it helped that you obviously like you said wanted to be there so like you were always open to the discussions because you wanted to sign an extension the whole time like you really were looking forward to going back I'm sure you guys get asked all the time too, Zach and Dakota, but I, I, especially in my office, there was a lot of people, you know, and I went to a wedding this summer, this winter in Chicago, the number of people who asked me about what they thought was going to happen in Ian's life over the next 12 months. And I always gave the same answer. I was, I, I was like, I truly have no idea what's going to happen, but I said, which is true. And I think you guys would agree with this. I knew how much you wanted to be in Chicago. And I said, all I can tell you is he really wants to be a cub. And I thought that mattered a lot. And that's why I was so happy for you last week, because I, I felt like to me for a while, this wasn't going to happen. And the fact that now it's happened in a way that not only rewards the fans who, you know, we could talk about all the, all the guys that unfortunately didn't get to be Cubs, you know, guys who earned extensions who maybe didn't get them. Now, the fact that they're finally giving an extension to a guy like you, I think hopefully is a sign in the right direction. And I'm curious, Ian, did, I mean, you don't have to, we can cut this if you don't want to answer it, but did you ever think like it was dead? Did you ever think like there was like, this isn't going to happen this year? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I thought it was dead. I'm probably on opening day. You know, I thought it was dead when, when opening day came and went, um, I really thought that that, I really thought that was it. And, uh, kind of going in, going into that last game at the only emotional thing that I had during the whole, which is interesting. Like, kind of maybe when I moved past it or when I decided like I'm just gonna go play I last game at Sloan and uh in AZ it was kind of like damn man I've been coming here for forever was it eight eight or nine years I guess yeah. eight springs I was like eight years been coming here like playing in the stadium and like all the different people all the like staff the memories the people that are in Arizona that just like help us there and like you know, I kind of was walking off that field like, shit, this could be the last time I play here. And uh, then it felt like what, nothing was going to happen. And I just had to have to make that decision mentally that, like, that's okay. And, like, I had to convince myself that, like, 
I can go play somewhere else. I can go, you know, just like there's options and I will, it'll be a different experience, but like an experience that will be cool and I'll make the most out of. And like, I, I had got to that point mentally for sure. I think, I don't know what Zach thought, but I kind of thought the same thing. Like just from talking to you after like a deal didn't get done in spring, it kind of seems like, like we always like kind of half joke that you'd get traded the Yankees. But in my head, I was like, he's probably going to get dealt around the deadline. Like if the Cubs aren't contending come that time, like I bet he gets traded and he signs an extension wherever he goes or he tests free agency. Like I kind of thought that, like you said, once spring ended, I was like, oh, I guess like we're going to see where he ends up going. 100%. And we, we all, like you said, we said that all like joking, but also serious. And yeah. especially like, you know, when it didn't happen, and you don't really know, like the Cubs made a bunch of moves in the offseason. It was like, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to win now? And, you know, as we were saying, like the Cubs have been playing really well the first few weeks. Like Cubbies are hot. Cubbies yeah. are hot. You know, like does that have something to do with it where the front office is like, oh, shit, you know, if we can do this, if we can sign him to, you know, a three or four year deal, like where does that put us? Does You know, that helps us you know, win now still, it's not putting us crazy over the books, whatever, you know, um, and you're raking. So why not? That's what I was going to say. They probably saw and they're like, Hey, we'd like to keep this three hole hitter. Yeah. That's hitting 320 with a, whatever OPS, like 900 not, OPS. Right. Can we pause to talk about quality mind by neurohacker? Love to Do you deal with brain fog, memory lapses, sluggish thinking. You need quality mind. Our sponsor neurohacker combines 28 of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on earth into the ultimate brain fuel formula, Quali Mind, And it's been changing people's lives for years now. This is really interesting. I'm really interested in this. Is this uh, NSF? Can we get into this? Struggling to stay motivated? Looking for inspiration? Quali Mind was designed to support the four pillars of cogn- cognition, energy, focus, memory, and drive. Quality Mind is made by the world's top scientists and beyond the science and research, Quality Mind flat out works. 100 day money back guarantee. You can try it for three months and return it. Full refund if you're not satisfied. Go to neurohacker.com slash compound for $100 off. It is $100 off. And use code compound at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. That's neurohacker.com. Hacker.com. We're getting $100 off. Neurohacker.com slash compound. $100 off plus code compound at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. Pretty, pretty good deal there. Pretty good deal. You started reading that and you were like, what is this? And then you got into it and you're like, oh, I kind of yeah, like this. Sounds like, a, sounds like a pretty cool thing. I'm into that. Ian, did you see we were talking about it before you joined? Well, first, did anyone... Did, did we have any more questions for Ian's extension? I was going to change gears to a different player. Just a round of applause. That's yep. it. Just That's congrats. We applause. are we are all pumped for you. Hey, thanks, Freds. We thanks. were very excited when we could have blown the pot up us. a little bit more, but it's all good. Next deal. Yeah. Our, our, the, the compound chat that the four of us have was blowing up when it was going on because at first it was like, "Is this real?" And then we were trying to figure out. It was like, "Yeah, no, this is happening." Well, Ian texted me and Zach at like midnight the night before, and I was like half asleep. And he just texts us like, boys, and we're like, what do you got? And then he told us, and I was like, well, now I'm wide awake. Here we go. And I'm like, can we tweet it? Let me break the news at midnight. It'd be awesome. Ian, I was going to ask you if if you saw the uh, Red Sox-Angels game going on right now, if you saw any of the tweets. No, what's happening? So it's pouring rain. And they had uh, Otani out there, like warming up to pitch in the game. And I, if you see Talking Baseball posted about it, it's literally like the mound is like underwater, and he's throwing warm up pitches. And then he just stands there and like looks around. And he's like, "Are are we doing this? Like, is is this real life right now?" It's literally like poor. I know. It, I think it's Boston Marathon Day, so uh-huh. like they really want the game, but it's like I, it, it's not safe for anyone to go out there. Can I say something about? The West Coast. It's the best coast. Waking up and like having things happening already freaks me out. Yeah. And like getting to the ballpark and looking up and being like, East Coast games are finishing. I'm like, what's happening? 
it's legit two different worlds. Like the East Coast and the West Coast are legit two different places. <sighs> two different worlds. And I just don't love the time zone. It's not my favorite time zone. Okay. I'm not. It's beautiful. There's a lot of good things about the West Coast. I remember I remember my first I worked in the West Coast for a couple of years and I flew out there from New York the first year and I landed and we went to the Space Needle. We did all these things and it was like still like four o'clock in the afternoon and it was light outside and there was like an NHL. There was like a Stanley Cup final game going on. And I was like, is this live? Like the sun's out. It's like the middle of the day. What's going on? They're like, you know, this is live. And I was like, I don't this is not for me. I don't I like I'm, I'm up at night. I, I don't I'm like sporting events on when the, like, the lights outside it doesn't make any sense to me yep. it is really funny too because people that grow up on the west coast like nico grew up on the west coast and he's like yeah 10 a.m football is amazing and like oh, i love man. that the world series is over and it's not like midnight and i don't have to like stay up until 1 a.m he's like but he grew up on the west coast he loves the west coast west coast kid it's definitely one of those where like wherever you grew up is what you're used to. And like, to me, a 10 a.m. football game sounds like insanity. Yeah. I still got eye crusties in and I'm watching yeah. football. Like, you know, you guys like college football too. That's 9 a.m. for college. Football. Oh, big 10 kicks. I'm not even awake by then. Yeah. I think I also, I genuinely think like East coast people sleep in until, you know, their day starts at, you know, nine, 10, stay up yeah. late. West coast people, they're up at, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. But they can because sporting events because sporting events are done at like 10 so they can go to sleep. Like for us, like uh, last night, there was a basketball. Uh, the Nuggets T-Wolves didn't start, didn't tip till 1030 Eastern. I was like, I mean, that's that's not getting watched by me. I'll be asleep. I fell asleep in the first half and I was like, yeah, I it. literally just went. I didn't have a chance. Yeah. Also, I will say, though, West Coast definitely got us beat on the weather. Me and Zach were talking about it. It was 65 degrees yesterday. I went golfing wearing shorts and today it is snowing. So Oy. just yeah. a nice little switch in 24 hours. Not pretty. You know what you nope. could use in the, in the snow, Dakota? What could I use in the if snow? You need to go shovel. You could use a pair of Bruce bolts. Ooh, I could. You watch That'd me, be nice. Don't want any ballistics. If you watch my game, you know that I wear Bruce bolts. I got two pairs. I got the whites with the baby blue, and I got the all baby blues with the baby blue palm this year. Just released. They're going fast. We'll have another shipment in, but if... Yeah, run to the website right now. You can still get them, BruceBolt.us, uh, for your Bruce Bolts. Harrison Bader, Brendan Nemo, Lars Dupar are all wearing them. I use the short cuff, but they also have the long cuff with the super protective strap. And they're the longest lasting gloves in the game. Real Cabretta leather, best fit, lasts longer. BruceBolt.us. Check out the Ian Hap. Signature series um, backslash IH8 backslash 61 million. It's a promo code I'm trying to help you out. Can I talk about the Cubbies real quick? I just want to talk about I know we were talking about the Cubbies a little bit, but the Cubbies won their first series in LA since 2014. That's, that's a real, kind of that's a real, that's a like real against stat. the Dodgers or just LA in general, like counting the Angels or the Angels technically, probably LA? just the Dodgers, but we've only played the angels maybe one time in LA since then. So could be both, but I, we, we had a really good series. Cubbies were inches from sweep. Cubbies were also inches from being one and two, but we take the series. That's baseball. Uh, it's baseball. <laughs> yeah. We take the series, really good games all around. Um, weekend series in LA stadiums rock. And I feel like I've been walked off. I, as in myself, on, on the Cubs team, have seen a lot of walk-offs in Dodger Stadium. They're always painful. And I feel like we've like been in so many situations there where it's like we're winning the game. It's like, oh, no, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And then we lose. And so we, we win the series 3-2 yesterday with, with two runners on. Um, and Box is, gets three punch-outs in the inning. And... I'm I'm running off the field. I'm thinking to myself, like, I can't remember last time we won a series in LA. And then that was because since I've been to the big leagues, we haven't done. And then I saw that I saw that stat and was like, that yep, that feels right. I mean, they've had such good teams there and they're a great team. It's hard to go play on the West Coast. It's hard to, you know, make that trip and be successful for a lot of different reasons. And kind of always felt like that was our kryptonite on even those good teams. So to get out of L.A. with a series win is awesome. I'll tell you what, 
it was bonkers that they gave Belly strike one in his first to bat after getting a standing L. That was insane. Not that was it was one of those where technically, like, I mean, I guess you and the thing was, I saw the video, he was close, like he was looking like a second too late. I'm like, realistically, you should call time if you're the umpire and give him a second to get his standing yeah. ovation. But instead it was like, nah, man, you're a second late. Like, I can't do it. Strike one. That's the hard part is like, you just need, you just need the feel. Everybody knows Cody Ballinger. He's been around a long time. Won an MVP, won an MVP there. MVP, won a World won an MVP Series. There. He's won a World Series there. He won the Rookie of the Year there. His poster is still on the outside of the stadium because he's done those things. Like, like will be there forever. Like, mm-hmm. his picture will be on Dodger Stadium forever. Yes. Yeah. And... Like, we're calling a strike on him? Come on. It, it would have been cool if, like, I forget who was pitching that day, but if they just, like, stood there and took a ball, like, just to, like, yeah. counteract it almost, that would have been kind of cool. Well, everybody saw the video of Kutch, like, when Kutch went back to Pittsburgh, and, like, they yeah. had a ton of feel. I know it was a different moment, and I know, you know, Kutch is at the end-ish of, you know, he's not done done. He's playing really well. But, Ian's like, counting him out. Ian's counting out McCutcheon. No. I really like Andrew kidding. McCutcheon, and I would never do that. But he has, you know, he played in Pittsburgh. He did a lot of the similar things, right? Did a lot of similar yeah. things, but he left or was traded, went and played somewhere else, and now has come back. And so it was a little bit of a different moment, but that was like such a feel moment. And the way that it was really cool to be back, to see him come back to Dodger Stadium, Cody, now, because... Yeah. The fans love him, man. The fans love him. They appreciate like what he did there. Well, um, there was so many just being in the outfield. There were so many Bellinger jerseys, and there was a little bit of a mix between like Cub and Dodger jerseys. Like obviously, ninety five percent Cody Bellinger Dodger jerseys, but like it was so cool to see. So cool. Well, I was gonna say they loved him until he hit that homer yesterday. Then they probably hated him again. No, Andy it was Rob, until he it, it was Rob until he robbed Jay Hayes homer. Oh, yeah. I didn't even he, see that. He robs Jay Hayes homer on. On Saturday, and so it was in like the second or third inning. Jay hit a dead center pump. Like, Do you have mixed feelings about, about that? Were you kind of like hoping Jay would get one? That's that playing against one of your like really good friends is such a. It's like, I hope you do it, well. Like, but I hope we beat you. Yeah, they hit it. And you're like, no, nice swing. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that was a really good pass. And then it's like, get that up. Uh, Catches it and you're like, yeah, oh, ah, oh. the uh, but Cody went up over the fence, robbed like really sick, and then they all started to boo him. And he gave like the are you not entertained and was like, <laughs> and he's like such a like happy dude who's smiling, like taking it all in. But it was a really cool moment. And then they were booing him after that, and then he hit the homer. But it was like always a mix of like cheers and boos. So it was fun, but they, they really do appreciate him. Um, and that was like really cool to see his full circle moment. Uh, that is a, a huge Homer for him to like, do that, come back, hit that Homer. Um, that was rushed really, really it cool. too. a nuke rushed. rushed. Back. rushed. It rushed. is impossible playing against like when I played against Zach last year, like you can't root for him because it's like, well, I don't want my team to do bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want our pitchers to give up runs to him, but I'm like, well, I don't want him to go for four or four strikeouts. I always said, I was like, I hope he just hits one like 110 right at our third base whenever he bat, like just hammers it right at someone. That must be what you said this year because that's what's happening. So, well, well, Nico, Jason played, Jason played Saturday, you know, started in center. And so to lead off the game, Nico hits a ball to the wall and Jay jumps into the wall and catches it. <laughs> It was like, oh. and he goes like, come on, man, we're friends. Yeah. And then my second at bat, I came up and lined out to him. And on the video, on the video, you could see him catch it and go, damn, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. But like, you know, you're texting the whole series and, and talking to him and they're about to come to Chicago too, uh, which would be great. We'll probably get together in Chicago, but it was, it was awesome to see him. Uh, he did. He spoke on Jackie Robinson day. Yeah, and we both so Jackie's statue was in center field at Dodger Stadium, like out behind uh, the wall, and so we went out there both teams and uh, um, Dave Roberts spoke and Rossi spoke for a minute, but Jay Hay was the one that really gave speech and um, it was really really cool. And then he spoke before the game in the stadium to the fans, and so like to 
you know, be there and watch him do that. And like Jackie Robinson Day in LA, you know, with the Dodgers is a really cool thing. That's sick, yeah. Yeah, that that whole thing was special. Jay Hayes just such a beauty. He's the best. Just a great person. The absolute best. It was it's funny to play with guys who hadn't been around like around him, around him, like right next to him. And they'd be like, Jay Hayes a unit. Like (laughs) he is massive and he's ripped. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he has a size 30 waist. <laughs> he's he's a specimen. He exactly like, It's insane. He's a dick sporting goods mannequin. Yep. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> what else is happening in baseball that we should talk about? Ray's lost. Finally. Do you want to talk about Lightbox? Back to back series. Looking for some gifts to help this Mother's Day season? Let Lightbox lab-grown diamonds do all the work. Lab-grown diamonds is what we're doing, huh? I mean, I love where we're at with the ads. From sparkly studs to brilliant necklaces, these gems will make her jaw drop, whether it's for your mom, for your spouse. Getting her a stunning stone from Lightbox lab-grown diamonds is a guaranteed win. So this year, skip the socks. Instead, become NDP of Mother's Day. With the gift, she'll never forget. Use promo code COMPOUND10. That's COMPOUND10 for 10% off your purchase. Lightboxjewelry.com. COMPOUND10 for 10% off. Link in the description. Link in the description. It's also lightboxjewelry.com. Uh, Ooh. The Rays had a crazy start, huh? Yes. Bananas. And now they're on the verge of getting swept by the Blue Jays. That's baseball. And the Blue Jays are also very good. Or, we, no, they were on the verge. I think they, they beat lost, them. They I think they beat back series, I'm pretty sure. The Rays? Yeah. No, they're, just they're, one four, they're 14 and two. That's not back to back games then. They did. They lost the back first two against the Blue Jays and then they won yesterday. We started the 2020 season 13 and three. And that felt pretty good. Yeah. That's. It's such a good feeling to get off to a hot start. So 14 and 14 and two is. Uh, oh. That's what, what I wanted to bring up, though. Um, how about that uh, that kid, what is it, Neto or Neto for yeah, the Angels? Yeah, bro, what? He got drafted last year, and they literally called him up and literally, like, said in the press, like, he's our starting shortstop for the rest of the season, basically. That's insane. He's 22. Like, he, he was a college guy, but, like, that's Do we know anything about like, this guy? just got drafted. I, I literally only know he just got drafted last year, and he played at Campbell. Where I played when I played Campbell. for the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. The Campbell Camels. Yep. I the got Campbell I Campbell. got so many letters from the Campbell Camels. They were relentless with the letters. Well, maybe you could have team ah, you're a little older than him. You could have been so a fighting camel. I mean, best nickname in college sports. It's, Dakota, remember it's we the best there? mascot in sports. Zach, where's where's your head at right now? I just said that. Oh. I couldn't hear you. There was I said we played talk. I said we played there when we played for the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. That's all I heard was Pelicans, and I figured that. But that place was so hard to see. And their they, mound was massive. The, ma- the mound was like six feet high, and in the background they had it's just white streetlights in the background. And yeah. In the Astros, all their guys throw 100, and they're throwing out a plane like this with lights in the back. Sick. And I want to say the corners were like, like yeah. 360. It was all like the deepest nowhere. field of all time. Nowhere. <laughs> That's why I, that's why I didn't want to be a camel. It sounds like a terrible place to play. But we got off track. I meant to talk. We, we meant to talk about Zach Neto, who just happened to go to Campbell. Yes. Could you imagine the year you got drafted? Well, Ian was fucking Ian. He was pretty close to doing this. Like the year you got drafted, the very next year, you're called up to the big leagues, and they're like, "Hey, you're our starting shortstop," and you're playing with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and Anthony Rendon and Hunter Renfro. I can't imagine it in uh, in April. No. And in April to be like, hey man, you're gonna you're gonna play shortstop for the whole year, and like you're yeah, and to have that squad, and like you're gonna watch Mike and Shohei, and like, and then he's hitting lead off. He's with. setting the table for him. He's leading off. He's hitting lead off today against Boston. Oh my god, dude! Good for him. Good for yeah, him. That's so also, sick. like also good for them for being like he's the guy for the rest of the year because. I mean, there could, I mean, maybe this guy's going to be the best player in the world, like run away with the rookie of the year, but also like if he has some struggles, like they've put it out there, like they got to stick with him. I think that's the best, that's just a good way of like giving him confidence of like, hey man, like you're our guy. Like yep. even if you struggle a little bit, like you're not going right back down. Like we didn't just do this out of nowhere. Like we think you're our guy. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Which is huge. Stick. Give me one more 
story in baseball right now. Wait, can I ask you something? Yes. About basketball, Tom, don't cut this. Okay, just take it, take it easy. If you're... You know he wants to. If you're in the NBA and and the Lakers haven't been a great team this year, but you have to play LeBron in the first round of the playoffs, are you like, ah, tough? Do you know who they're playing in the first round, Ian? I'm going to They're playing the, the Memphis Grizzlies. Nice. Good job. But John ja Morant got hurt. He, wow. Look at you. I know basketball. Uh, but yes, that is, I said it, uh, I think to Zach or like somebody else, but the fact that the Lakers are the seven seed and the Grizzlies are the two seed, it's like, Hey Memphis, you did great all year. Like you're the second best team in the West. Like, congrats. You got to play LeBron, Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura had an unbelievable game one. Good luck. Like go get him. Congrats on getting second place. And if LeBron, if LeBron's healthy and turns it on, like, dude, I saw a tweet he's the today. Best player ever. Zach, I saw a tweet today that compared this season stats to his 2013 season where he won the NBA. So that's MVP. 10 years ago. He averaged more points this season. Uh, field goal percentage was about the same. Minutes were about the same. I think he averaged like more rebounds and more. Assist. Like it's insane. Bro, it's like 37. He's, he's different. And he's still jumping out of the gym. And he was diving like his life was on the line last week, bro. Diving. But that's why basketball, like the playoffs in basketball are actually like people always say like, oh, they don't try them. Like watch the playoffs because watch, it is I said it, everything yeah, they bro. got. I said it last night. I was like, bro, watching this is just, it's a different game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Playoff Dip. basketball is actually is actually fun to have on the television. Because they're locked in on every possession. It's sick. Yeah. And you see what freak athletes these guys are. Like they do stuff and you're like, what's happening? Like how can a human do this? Yeah. I mean, LeBron, it was on in the locker room for a minute yesterday before our game, and LeBron had a steal and then immediately came down and dunked. You know what play I'm talking about? He had a steal and he immediately came down and just did yeah. what LeBron's done for 22 years and, like, just ah, – it's like, that guy's 38 years old or whatever. He's just like, blah, blah. it's like, oh, my God, just he flying also had through like, the air. He had, like, three, I feel like, weak side help blocks. Where yes. he just did like the similar ones to back in the championship a couple of years ago, like the iconic one. Like he just did like three chase down blocks. And like you said, Ian, I'm like, this guy's like 30, what is he, 37, 38? I'm like, 30. How does he do that? How does he still do that? That shouldn't be possible. He's 38 uh, and he's played like 65,000 minutes in the NBA. Like <laughs> oh, 65,000 how's, minutes. How's your body still holding you up? Like, how are you, you know still what, standing? You know what was another good stat? This is, uh, we, we call this NBA corner here on the Compound Podcast presented by Parcero. Uh, You know what else is a crazy stat? And Nico and I were talking about for a second is that he's played, What is it legitimately 22 seasons? Is that right? 20? Uh, since he was I I'll, I'll get the number. Yeah, it's right around. It's nineteen or twenty. Should be, yeah, it should be like 20. twenty. He's played twenty seasons in the NBA. He's also played two hundred and forty or two hundred and fifty playoff games. He's played three full extra seasons. Three full extra seasons just in the playoffs. What are Different. we talking? And he's playing all of the minutes in those games. This he's is not taking minutes. Twentieth season. This is twentieth season, season plus three extra playoff seasons. Well, that's what I don't know if you saw it. Uh, Darvin Ham, their coach for the Lakers, they asked him yesterday, like, do Anthony Davis and LeBron James have any minutes restrictions going into the playoffs? And he said, well, I enjoy living, so I know better than to try to take them out of the game. Yeah, what? <laughs> Literally, like, if they want to play 48, hey, go play 48, LeBron. Like, if you want it, go get it. He's got to, like, tell him when he comes in and when he goes out, right? A hundred percent. Like, I guarantee LeBron's like, hey, like, I need a breather here. Or they're like, in the fourth quarter, they don't usually don't start the fourth He'll tell you when he's going in. Yeah. And I feel like that's the, that's a lot of like the stars in the NBA. They'll like, like Kawhi Leonard for the Clippers. Like he came out to start the fourth quarter yesterday. He probably just went back in like two minutes later. Like didn't tell Ty Lewis probably, no. hey, like I'm he's good. Standing, standing next to him at the table and Ty turns out. Oh, all right. What's up? He's like, oh, you're in. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> okay, you're going in. He probably just asks like, who do you want me to take out? Like I'm going back in. Right. Can we uh, give the people the screen time? And that was NBA talk here on the compound. And that was the NBA corner here on uh, the compound podcast. For the part of rum. We, if we talk about it enough, Tom won't cut it. Worried ahead, about dude. Dakota because Dakota. Dude, getting, what's going on? It's still I. I don't know. Look at it. It says Go. one minute. It says one minute today and like none yesterday. Go 
to the Apple store, get a new phone. I don't understand why it doesn't track. I literally turned it off it, like for a day and then turned it back on to see if it would track it. I literally was testing stuff this last week. And I you're I ruining know. you're ruining this segment. <laughs> I know. And I'm actually phone like, screen time. Uh it's Sloan is the world's leading manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems the company is at the forefront of the green building movement and provides smart sustainable hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water efficient products including flush meters faucet sinks soap dispensers fixtures commercial industrial and social markets worldwide sloan.com we were at dodger stadium waterless sloan urinals let me tell you magical magical no water how do they do it i don't know they're at the forefront of innovation Somebody give me a screen time from yesterday. It says yeah. there's a new update on oh. my phone. I'm going to try oh, Dakota. Dakota. No, Sunday. Sundays are private. Come on. Don't no, make it. Sunday. It's got to be Sunday. Sunday. Hey, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday way, and we, we got rained out yesterday, too. If so I, I had a big one. If I could give an estimate estimate of mine yesterday, one, I drove to Lansing to golf, which is an hour each way, and I use Zach's maps, which keeps it up. Not smart by me. Oh, it doesn't. You can turn it's, your phone off. I know, but like I had to see where I was going and it I use it to track my two score two. and stuff. If I had to give an estimate of mine, I would say like probably like 11 28. That's my right. guess. It was, it was like around 12 hours. This, I'm well, unhappy with this outcome. Well, it's know. going in, it's going into the system as 23 hours and 50. I, that's why I tried to give a more realistic <laughs> estimate. Tom, this time. I'd say it's around 11. Tom, 10 hours, 55 minutes. <laughs> See, Tom, oh, I, was, I was nice. I helped you out. Sundays are private. Room. That's pretty good. We had a, we had a rain del- or a rain out yesterday, 740. That's Ooh, not that bad God. for a whole day. No, not, not bad at all. No. I was I was stressing yesterday because Ooh. I was because we were traveling and I was like, this is a high number. And but my number looks reasonable compared to your numbers. It's 444. Jeez, and rice, Ian. Dave, whatever. Whole day. Whatever. You're, such a, whatever. you're such a dork, Ian. Gosh. But Zach, real quick, I, I don't want to be like that guy. I'm not trying to dig too deep here, but two hours and 13 minutes of messages. I told you. you what did I tell people. you? You be texting. What did I tell you, bro? You I'm be telling texting, you. texting. I'm telling you, my phone it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. <laughs> Just a popular guy. Bro, it literally does not stop. Well, and we also, not- yeah, we have a group text that is literally nonstop text when sports bro, are on. So I have that times four. I'm not joking. Like let's get you an assistant, huh? Manage those, manage those messages. I need it. Oh, bro, it doesn't stop. I get made fun of all the time. I'm like, dude, I, I got a text, and they're like, why? And I'm like, bro, it just doesn't stop ringing. <laughs> Poor guy, I just too many friends. That's screen time presented by Sloan. <laughs> Go to Sloan.com for more info. And that's episode 155 of the Compound Podcast presented by Parse Rum. Go to Benny's. Go to Total One. Go to your local spot and ask for Parse. Tweet us your stories about you drinking parse where you found it where you had it tom will read him he loves the parse see you next week and ian's rich it's rich